Right, so this is the third video for the last lesson in the trig functions pack. And it's an exam question. It's quite a tricky exam question as well. Let's put it on full screen for a second, but I'll need to go to calculus to show stuff. It's important to read the question with this one. Part A isn't a solvey thing. It's just a rewrite. So all I'm doing here, because it says express, is I'm rewriting what I've got. So part A says express 2 tan squared theta minus 1 over cos theta in terms of secant. So this bit's fine here because 1 over cos is secant theta. But the tan squared, I need to use the identity. And I know that tan squared theta plus 1 is secant squared theta. So I'm going to replace that with secant squared theta minus 1. Then I've got secant theta as well. So it's 2 secant squared theta minus 2 minus secant theta. And if you look, it's a disguised polynomial, a disguised quadratic. So I'm just going to rewrite it there. And I've got a nice disguised quadratic. So that's part A done. It's all in terms of secant and I've done my best to use little s's. Right, part B says, hence solve it. So if you look, so people would fall apart on this bit. This is the same as that. But instead of theta, it's got 2x minus 30. So I'm going to see that equation as 2, did a big s, sorry, secant squared, Instead of theta, I've got 2x minus 30. And then I've got minus secant 2x minus 30 minus 2. Well, that's equal to 4. So when people attack this question on the exam paper, they missed off the 4 and they just got really bogged down in what's going on. And this is a really, really tricky exam question. And if you think we're doing it now in September, when you wouldn't really do it till... June. So you've got a lot more practice ahead of you. So don't worry about how complex this feels. Right, so what have we got? So I've got 2 secant squared 2x minus 30 minus secant 2x minus 30 minus 6 is equal to 0. And if I put that into poly, so I'm just going to put 2 minus 1 minus 6 into poly. Just press escape on the keyboard. Hang on. Boing. Bring the calculator up, press the right one. There. So I've got 2 minus 1. Can move that down a bit. And minus 6. So it gives me 2 and it gives me minus a half. I'll just check that with the oh, minus 1 and a half, sorry. So 2 and minus 1 and a half. So it gives me secant of 2x minus 30 is 2, or secant of 2x minus 30 is minus 1 and a half, minus 3 over 2. Now I know that secant is 1 over cos. Let's put it back on full screen in there. So I can switch it, so I can see it as 1 over cos, so if I flip it, I've got cos, look, I've gone back to be capitals, 2x minus 30 is a half, and I've got cos, see, look, big c's. I'm trying my best, Carl, I'm trying my best. Cos 2x minus 30 is minus 2 thirds. So I'm okay for both of those. Now I'm going to do a little bit, a bit cheeky here. What we used to do in the olden days is look what we were solving it for. So solving it from 0 to 180. Now that's for x. So if I wanted 2x minus 30, I'd look on my graph with cos for between about, what would it be, minus 30 to 330, get all my values off, and then add 30 on and divide by 2. But I'm not. I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to do it. Because we've got the calculators. There's more of a push for you use your calculator. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put in exactly what it wants me to do. 
So I'm going to do menu and graph. Oops, not that one. Where's graph gone? And I'm going to graph cos of 2x minus 30. So get rid of that. So cos of 2x minus 30. So there's a lot of maths involved in this, but you've got to count, so you're fine. And I'm going to graph 0 0.5. There. Now I've got to make sure I'm in degrees. I'm in degrees, that's okay, it says DAG. And when I set my axes, I'm just going to change my viewing window. So I'm going from 0 to 180, so I'm looking what the range is. So from 0 to 180. And cos graph goes between plus or minus 1. So I'm just going to do minus 1.1. So 1.1. I've got to be careful of the time now because I've got I'm in rolling at the moment. So I've got to go in a second, I think. Yeah, I do. Right, so that gives me that pretty picture there. And if I solve it, it gives me 45 and 165. And that agrees with what's in the pack. Yeah. So instead of doing cos x and changing the range, I am just, I've just graphed cos of 2x minus 30, and I've just graphed a half. And I'll do the same for the other one here. So I've got cos of 2x minus 30, so I've graphed that, and I'm seeing where it crosses minus 2 thirds. So if I press exit and go up to minus 2 thirds, so minus 2 thirds, there. It'll give me different, like, with this one, this one won't give me nice answers. So it'll give me, should give me decimals. Now, does the question say to leave your answer to anything? So if we assume it's one decimal place, then I've got an answer of x is 80.9 or, press right, 129.1. There. There we go. And that's that question done. And it's a really, really tricky question. Um, but with our calculators, we've made it a lot easier for ourselves. Because instead of changing the range and graphing cars and messing around, I've just graphed what I see. Now we've got loads, a load of consolidation questions to have a go at in class. And then we should, because this is the last lesson, I think we have a quiz as well. Um, we lot haven't started yet, so I'm just kind of going off what I think happens. And we'll have a big homework as well, and we'll have exam questions for this pack as well, to make sure we get plenty of practice. Right, well done everybody, and I'll see you all soon.